Amen. Pretty good. What's going on, brother Sal? How you feeling? I'm doing all right, man. Appreciate your call. Let uh, Sister Sherry, how you feeling tonight? I'm feeling okay. Good. Okay, blessing. I got a couple questions here. Uh, first, did anybody uh, in the New Testament, or anybody in the Bible, did anybody in the Bible have a New Testament? Uh, Scriptures. Are you, are, are you speaking, well, the uh, what time frame are you speaking for? Any time frame. Did anybody in the Bible, anybody in the Bible, right? Have I need a time a new testament. What do you I mean? I need a timeline. Time I need a time frame. Okay. When Jesus walked the earth, let's just make it simple. When Jesus walked the earth and when Paul walked the earth, did anybody have a new testament? Right. You, no. When Jesus walked the earth, the uh, Jesus hadn't died yet, so the new testament, the new covenant had not started yet. So everything was still okay. going on at that particular time. People were still wit- being witnessed to, and they were witnessing what Jesus was doing, saying, preaching, all of that. So, again, at that particular time, uh, for John, John didn't write until 60 years later after Jesus had died, and he was in Ephesus, and Paul's stuff was already written. Okay. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Okay, so did anybody in the book of Acts, during the time when Paul was writing the book of Acts, did anybody have a New Testament, the scroll of the New Paul Testament? Paul didn't write the book of Any... Acts, Luke did. I'm sorry? Paul didn't write the book of Acts, Luke did. No, I didn't say he wrote the book of Acts. I just wanted to, for clarity, I'm trying to get understanding. Yes, he did. You did. You said Paul wrote the book? the book of Acts, and I just corrected no, no. you. Luke wrote the book of Acts. Okay. Again, and let me say this. Mm-hmm. This one clear. Go to Acts. So you go to Acts seventeen eleven for me, please. Mm-hmm. Acts seventeen. Yeah, eleven. Okay, can you All read right. that for me? All right. Verse eleven. It says here, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Okay. Okay. What scriptures? Because Paul is when Paul was going around preaching. What scriptures were the Berean church checking to see was he telling the truth? Most likely the uh, the Torah, the Old Testament, the Tanakh. Okay. Cool. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you go to Second Timothy, chapter three? Second Timothy, chapter three. Okay. And okay. could you start? Uh, you can read at verse fourteen through fifteen for me, please. Uh huh. Fourteen. I know it by heart. Yeah. I know it by heart. Okay. But continue so, thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing, of whom thou hast learned them, and from the child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, instructions, and even training in righteousness, that that man or woman may be perfect, furnished in the perfect will of God. What's your point? Okay. When they mention the Holy Scriptures here, what scriptures Mm -hmm. are they talking about? He's he's referring to Old Testament. Okay, so you would agree then that in the book of Acts and in these scriptures right here, these scriptures could make one wise even unto salvation. Would you agree with that? I, I believe Old Testament and New Testament will make you wise. Peter even confirms um, Paul's writings to these scriptures. What's your point? No, but I'm saying in this context of these mm-hmm. people that's reading this letter here, they didn't have a New mm-hmm. Testament. We already agreed on that, right? Mm-hmm. Paul, Paul is preaching to them. Mm-hmm. He's explaining. But, but I'm saying... Well, just like Priscilla and Aquila... Hold on. Just like Priscilla and Aquila pulled Apollos to the side. And, 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 and in fact, let's go there. Acts chapter 18. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to jump ahead. 
Jump no, 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 no
that uh, that Paul's letter is scripture. Yes or no? Okay, sister. Again, I'm asking you a question. You can't ask, how are you going to answer me? How are you going to answer me? One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Okay. How, okay, it's one at a time. I, 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 you muted me. I let her talk. So now can, can I just have the flow just to say something? If that's possible, I don't want to be rude to anybody. Okay, so what I'm saying, sister, answer my question first, and I have no problem with answering your question. I you did. haven't answered my question. You went to ask. To I, You're doing it right I now. To what I Hold on, Jerry Lark. Hold on. Hold on, Jerry Lark. Okay. Hold on, Jerry Lark. Because, you know, they are calling because they got their questions, so and they only have a little bit of time to ask their questions to you. So you want to take his okay. question or you want to move on? Okay. I answered his question already. And I asked him answer my question. to answer, does, do you agree with Second Peter chapter 316? That's going to solve you and I's issue. Sister, you never asked my question. You jumped to the book of Acts. I was going to ask you a question I about Second Timothy, and then question. you jumped to the book of Acts on me. And but, I did answer I, I do your agree. question. I'm, I'm sorry? Do you agree with Second Peter 316? Yes. Moving on. Okay, so now answer my. Oh, you mean moving on as the next person, Charlie? Yeah, <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. you can, right? mm-hmm. oh. yeah, yeah, next person. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Once again, the number is five one six five three one nine nine five nine. That's five one six five three one nine nine five nine. We're gonna take a few more callers before we wrap the show up. And uh, once again, I appreciate all the calls that came in. Let's go to the next person. Let's go to uh, 469, you're live. 469, you're live. 469, can you hear me? 469. Hello? Yeah, what's going on? Shalom, this is Shika Siba. Okay. Hey, I'm coming here um, asking some you know, I was a Christian for 30-something years. I taught in the church. And so uh, Cherry Love claims that uh, Christ is eternal. However, she will say that the Mosaic law had nothing to do with him and that even though the Torah is called the light, the way, the truth, that Christ has nothing to do with the Torah called the light, the way, and the truth. Uh, and I, I guess I want to know, like, how can you believe that Christ came to undo the Father when he was there with the Father, so you say you believe? And then after that, we're going to talk about your witness on my daughter that you did, and where did you come up with that? So let's go with the first thing first. The first thing first is how is Christ eternal does not have anything to do with Mount Sinai, came to fulfill it and then tell you to disregard it at all. And where is that in the Bible? Okay. Um, did God say that he was Alpha and Omega? Absolutely. He did. Right, right. So he okay. was. Okay. Can, you, can you do me a favor? You got your Bible. You got your Bible. Um, I, yes, you know, absolutely. I know you're not used to that, but you, you got your Bible. <laughs> I okay. did a whole. Let's go. To, let's go here. Okay. So you, we both Bible. agree that we uh, both agree that God the Father calls Himself Alpha, Omega, Beginning, and End, First and Last. Right? We agree with that, right? Absolutely. Right. Okay. All absolutely. right. So could you do me a favor? <laughs> could you do me a favor, beloved? And go to Revelation 1 and 8. Can you read that to me? And tell me who's speaking right there. Revelation 1 and 8. You know the last book in the Bible. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Can you read that for me and tell me who's speaking? You quiet? You all right? Sound you still there? Yeah, hold on, hold on, Sheik, you still there? Hold on, hold on. 
Yeah, she, she she's still there. The line is open. <laughs> oh no, stand by. Stand by. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think she's still there. That. Well, yeah, she's still there. She don't fell out. That's what happened. Sarah. She's here. <laughs> thinking about it, Sarah. She's thinking about it. Praise God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, sheep. We only got a amount of time now. Come on now, because I got people to get this. Okay, Sarah, I think she done fell on her face, so I guess we can move on. I don't know. Uh, what I wanted to have uh, she could see to read when she fell out uh, was uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, it says, and I asked her the question, did God the Father call himself Alpha and Omega? I already answered it. I'm sorry. My, my mic was oh, okay. uh, saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, who is to come, the Almighty. What you don't understand uh-huh. is that you're thinking oh, no, no, it's no, no, no. a three no, no, no. Who is speaking there? Who is speaking there? I don't know who who's speaking there. I believe it is uh, well, you the don't most know who's speaking in Revelation 1 and Listen, you know, the people know me with that. Sheeta, you know, Sheeta, 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 who it is. 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 Terry Love said we got to move on, so as a special guest, you're going to have to move on. That, you know, that's one of the rules. You can, we can move on. All right. We got a few more people standing by. Let's go to 352. Right. You're live. 352. You're live. All right. All right. I'm, I'm back on. How you doing, Sister Cherry? I'm back on. This is Brother JT, preacher. I'm glad oh, to be back on the hey, show. Hey, JT, how are you? Hey, hey, you know, I, you know, I, I try to be nice because I, I don't want you to cut me off. But uh, <laughs> all right, I got a question for you: Is mm-hmm. Israel still the Lord's portion and heritage? Uh, yeah, and the Gentiles too. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. That would be the body so, of Christ. Mm-hmm. They ain't no okay, kids. So that's the, don't that's, try that. That again. would be the. Okay, so okay, cool, cool. No, no problem. I, I just. So according to Deuteronomy 32 and 9, when he says, you know, or mm-hmm. verse 8, when he, the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, and he separated the sons of Adam or the sons of El, mm-hmm. and he says the Lord's portion is his people, and Jacob is the lot mm-hmm. of his inheritance or heritage. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. You'll say Gentiles. No problem. I'm not I'm not excluding Gentiles. Gentiles can be engrafted in if they believe in the Messiah. No, you can't do it. I that. mean, it don't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what God says. So, you know. He's no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying I am safe. I mean, because we all got to be grafted into to Yah through the sun, right? So and I'm, I'm correct Jesus. when I say Gentiles mm-hmm. in Israel, right? But he does specifically say that Israel is his portion, his heritage, in inheritance is is that safe to say? And the Gentiles too, mm-hmm. the body of Christ. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. Now, mm-hmm. can we go to Joel chapter three? And I just need you to help me with this because I need to know who he's gathering. All right. Are the, yeah. uh, are the Israelite are the are the Israelites still in play? Are they, they're still his people, right? Uh, and the Gentiles too. Mm-hmm. The Gentiles too. That's fine. Okay. But specifically, whenever he talks about his inheritance, who is he? Who is he specifically talking about? Mm, it, at this point, under the new covenant, the, his believers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Some check folks this out. Believe in Jesus can, Christ, you know, that's been born again. No matter if you may, Israel or not, maybe, you're not born you again. You're going to hell. What's the point? Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so can we look at Joel chapter three? All right, and maybe Joel just pick the first. Joel. Joel, excuse me, I'm so Joel. sorry. Joel chapter three. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. Verses We're one, at verses one through three. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Unless you're gonna pair cherry pick this one. Okay. For no, no, no. I'm asking you to read days. it. Actually. Uh huh. I, I am reading it. Yes, ma'am. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and uh, Judah and Jerusalem. I will uh-huh. also gather all nations, uh-huh. you left that out, mm-hmm. and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will mm-hmm. lead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. 
whom okay. they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And right. they have so, cast lots for my people. Uh uh-uh. uh, hold on. Context uh-huh. kills false That's doctrine. Fine. Stop this. And they have cast. You said one to three, Doc. And they okay, have cast me. lots for my people and have yes, given ma'am. a boy for a father and sold a girl for wine. And they might okay. drink. Question becomes. Uh-huh. Who are the people that are in captivity? No, no, I don't think it's anything. Well, I'm just asking all, you. First of who all, the, we know it who ain't the people? That's so one. is this a future prophecy that true. will take place? No, no it, is, it ain't you. Because, see, what I'm going to do is oh, move I, over I, here. I, to, I'm not here to argue with you I, I, I know you no, ain't no, got I'm, no argument. So what I'm going to do fine. is go over here. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here to Ezekiel chapter 27, right? Okay. And what's what you can do? And it okay. says here, because see, notice you're trying to cherry pick scripture. This is what you're, you're not. You're actually doing. deflecting so from my original question. question. This is a landing over Tyree. And notice in verse 4, it mentions Tyree. See? And it says, the word of the Lord, talking about in Joel chapter 3, you know, verse 4, which you didn't want to touch, it mentions Tyree. And Ezekiel so happens to mention the same thing. Look at that. The word of the Lord. So are you saying that Joel chapter 3 is happening? No, 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 no. The people need to hear Ezekiel 27, which is going to cancel everything that you try to do right now out. See, I don't play no games with y'all folks. Watch this. The word of the Lord came un- again unto me and say unto Tyrus, O thou that art a uh, uh, statue in the entirety of the sea, which art the merchants of the people of many isles. Thus says the Lord God, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am perfect beauty. Mm. Now, when I go down, it speaks about the inhabitants of Gideon and Everled, where thy uh, marina, sorry, you know, I'm bad with these names, thy wise right. men, O Tyrus, that were in thee, were thy pilots, right? And then when we go down further to verse 13, it starts mentioning the same places that's over there in Joel. Javin, Cabal, Mashiach, they were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. So did you know that slavery was a lucrative business back then, just like it is now? Yeah. Yeah. You might want to look that up. Don't do that. Oh. Don't do that again. Okay, don't, so don't what I was wanting to do I mean, that. you read Ezekiel. Yeah, hold on, guys. One at a time. And, and Cherry, remember. Hold on, hold on, Cherry. Remember. Okay, so they only have a limited time to answer their questions. So okay. it's going to be their only okay, opportunity. So, so let them, let them yeah. get their questions out. No, okay. No. okay, I see you. All right, so there was no problem with the reading of Ezekiel 27. I don't see that as connecting to Joel 3, but what the main thing I was asking is, would Joel 3 be the second coming of Christ? Has this the already happened yet? If, well, that what I'm time? saying is, okay, so if we go to, I, I don't want to go to another scripture, but Isaiah 11 talks about he would set his hand again a second time, and we know there's descriptions of the Messiah in the first part that he would gather, um, you know, Israel, the dispersed of Israel from Panthros, Egypt, and all those other places, and then he would gather Judah from the four corners of the earth. So what I'm asking mm-hmm. right here is, has this mm-hmm. hap- which captivity did Joel chapter three happen in? Because we know that during the time of the Babylonians, it was Judah that was mm-hmm. mainly under captivity because the house of Israel is no longer mm-hmm. there, and we know that Judah would go oh. through two two more cap. Am I am I wrong? Yeah, I, you, you wrong? are wrong uh, because you, you okay. just okay. jacked up and butchered Isaiah 11. So when we look at Isaiah 11, 1, it says, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his root. Now, is that before the I proceed, who is that? Oh, okay, that's the Messiah. Okay, you got that right. Yeah. And the Spirit of the Lord that. rest upon him. Mm-mm-mm, keep going. I agree and the, with you. Mm-hmm, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the Spirit in the no fear argument of the Lord. There. I actually agree so, with you. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. They, they <laughs> are listening to me. Stop talking. You actually and went to a scripture. Them, I didn't want to. I didn't uh, want to uh, pull again, the time, but you went to a scripture that I agree with. You know this is gonna hurt you. One at a time, you know y'all. One at a time, you. people. Mm-hmm. One at a time. How's it hurting? Listen, I'm talking. Be quiet. And shall make him of quick understanding and fear of the Lord. 
and you shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove the equity of the meat, of the earth, of the earth, not just Israel. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips, and he shall slay the wicked. Now, it's funny, because when I go further down in Isaiah 11 and 11, right, he lets you know where that scattered of Israel went, Assyria, Egypt, Petro, Cush, Elam, right? But it's funny. In Romans chapter 15, Paul gets the quote in it. He sure does, God Almighty. Look at this. Let's go over there to Romans chapter 15, which you like to avoid. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Why would I avoid Watch this thing? Miss uh, mm-hmm. Miss Sherry, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. actually because you're avoiding kind of because you you try to I don't want you to deflect. Okay, I don't want you to deflect. Listen, listen, listen. I don't want you to. No, I just listen to you. I've been patient. Hold on, Sherry. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> got to be a one at a time, guys. Please, you got to have this one at a time. I'm patient with you. We got to be transparent. I haven't disagreed with you at all. When when we set when we asked who was the portion. Okay, I, I, that's fine. Yeah. When we asked who the portion was, we said the scriptures mm-hmm. do say Israel. It, it does say that, and mm-hmm. you said Gentiles, which mm-hmm. I have no problem. I'm not a I'm not a one West camp and denying mm-hmm. anybody out of the kingdom. But no, what I am, is, what I simply, huh? But what I am establishing yeah, is that in Joel chapter three and Isaiah eleven, mm-hmm. we see that whoever who when the Messiah comes, whoever these people are. They're still at a place to where they're scattered, all right. That's and right. Yeah. what I see, what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing is, it seems to me, I could be wrong, but it seems to me that the nations of the earth that he's, that the nations of the earth that he's dealing with are nations that have plotted and demised and did something to scatter these people. So whoever Judah and Jerusalem is, I'm not gonna say I'm Judah or anything, but whoever they are, no. they're in a place of captivity, all right. And mm-hmm. the Most High, or His mm-hmm. Son, through His Son, is coming back to judge these people. So has mm-hmm. that you think that's prophecy you? happened? So has the Messiah came back a second time, and the King and both houses? No, we're still back waiting back. for the second coming of Christ. That's what we're waiting for. Okay, we're waiting for the second Good. coming of Christ. So well, we, hold on. So, so you, you're trying so to stop and school these scriptures. That's what you're trying to so, do. And so, I'm no, going no, no, to hear no, no, Romans no. chapter 15, where Paul is quoting from Isaiah 11. And you don't want this to come out. You're not going to mess around with the scriptures and chop it like that because you want this to be you, but it ain't. Okay? No, I, now, I never said, I never said hold up. Praise the Lord. I never said you anything right. about it being what? me. Mm-hmm. I never said anything you, about you, it being you, me. You the Israelite, right? You I haven't Israelite? said anything about it being me. <laughs> but are you an what does that got to do anything? What does that got to do? Are I'm a believer in the Messiah. Uh, do, I'm a believer in the Messiah. Do you believe that you're an Israelite? I believe believe in the Messiah. So it says here, mm -hmm, okay, whatever. So it says here in Romans chapter 15, for whatsoever Uh things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we are the patience and comfort of this. What verse is that? I'm starting at verse 4. I'm starting at verse 4. Oh, oh, verse 4? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, What patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and the consolation grants you life minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye mm-hmm. may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also receives us mm-hmm. uh, uh, to, his, uh, to the glory of God. Now I say to mm-hmm. you that Jesus Christ was a minister of circumcision for the truth of God to confirm mm-hmm. the promise made unto the Father. And okay. that the Gentiles might glorify God in his mercy, as it is That's written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto mm-hmm. them unto thy name. And again, he okay. said, rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise from the rain over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope. 
fill you with joy and peace in believing that mm-hmm. you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I can go further, which will crush you. Sir, please don't do this okay. to yourself. So uh-uh. <laughs> I appreciate uh-uh. you reading all that, but you still uh-uh. kind of deflected from my original question. No, I didn't what deflect. I'm simply asking, hold up. I think you make. I think you're trying to make a straw man argument, as if I'm saying Gentile can't come in. I'm asking you. Hold up, hold up. I'm I'm asking you. Is the Messiah coming again a second time to gather Jerusalem and Judah? Child, please. All right. Once again, family, this is the Hot Teach segment right here on Debate Talk for You. The number is 516-531-9959. I know it's kind of difficult. You know, audience, there's people out there saying that they <clears throat> have a difficulty hearing everything. So check it out. Keep it in mind that, you know, when you're going back and forth, you know, you, got, you know, make sure it's one at a time, especially if that's two that call it. You know, all the people that call in, make sure you listen one at a time, guys, because people want to learn. They want to get the information. When you talk, when you speak all together, people don't really, you know, can't grasp it or can't really understand what's going on. So just be mindful of that. But we appreciate the calls, of course. We appreciate the calls that call in. And I'm going to take maybe two more callers at the time. Yeah, maybe two more callers. And after that, we're going to pretty much wrap it up. Well, let's get some Let's get some more calls. Let's go to 469. 469. All right. It's me again. Okay. So we've already proven that Cherry Love believes that uh, Christ is eternal, but yet he has nothing to do with Mount Sinai. And then she asked me, if, if, uh, who, who's speaking here when they say Alpha and Omega? Well, we can point to many verses where both Christ and both the Most High says that they are Alpha and Omega, but you say that they are, they are three distinct persons. So I mm-hmm. want to know how... They are the same, but different at the same time. And I want you to do it in the Old Testament and prove it in the Old Testament on how that could actually be. Um, and if you understood the Old Testament, you know that you can do that. Oh, she's a oh, okay, so when we go over Stop here it. to Isaiah chapter 46, right? Right. Let's see. Where is that at? Isaiah chapter 46. Is that verse 5? Or is that verse. Not the answer, uh, Which one was it? I'm sorry. Um, oh, Isaiah chapter 43. I'm in the wrong one. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. Okay. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. This one. Okay. Says, Ye are my witness, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Who is that servant? That servant is, is uh, okay. You see that in the Old Testament? Mm. That's, you said that servant is who? That's in Deuteronomy. You should know that. No, no, no. Who is the servant in Isaiah 43 10? We got the Lord Man. here. We the, got the, the servant. servant God. The and he servant says God. That, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Who the is the servant? servant? The is the most. See, this is what you get. I just for trying to you. Be quiet, thank you. You know that. Now, cut her you off. I'm going to explain it. So, hold on. So, notice. That this notice that this child got came up here, right? And said, prove it from the Old Testament, right? So I go into the heart of the Old Testament, Isaiah, major prophet. Ye are my witness, saith the Lord, right? Capital L O R D, touch a grammar time, Yahweh. And my servant whom I have chosen. So I asked her, Who did God choose? Because watch what happened. That ye may know and believe me and understand he. Now, hold on. Jesus quotes this very same thing from what? John chapter 8, verse 24. He says, if you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. Before 
me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior, and we know who that Savior is. That Savior is Jesus Christ. So how can the triune God make this statement if there is no unification or no one else there? She can see, but go to bed. Okay? This is your second time getting hurt. Okay, Phil. You can move on. All right, family. We're going to take one more caller. One more caller. Once again, I appreciate everybody that called in. Uh, special guest, Sherry Love. You want to reach out? Of course, all the information in the description box. But let's take one more call. Let's go to 916 318. See you live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Salon, family. How y'all doing? Yeah, what's going on, fam? Can y'all hear me good enough? Can y'all hear me well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you loud and clear. Yep. All right. Hey, how you doing? It's Anonymous Hebrew. You there, Sister Cherry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get it. So I know you got a problem answer with your, it. Ask your question, child. I'm not your child, first off. So let's Come go on, ahead and uh, your, let's get this. Let's, so let's go ahead and um, so the only thing I want to make sure that we get clear is uh, as we go through the scriptures, I want to ask you a couple questions first so I can understand what you think or believe or understand about the scripts because I don't want to straw man you. So just real quick. Um, and briefly if possible so we can really deal with the scriptures. Um, Is it your belief or attestation that the disciples and the apostles would have taught everything that the Messiah taught? They would have taught everything that Jesus taught, correct? That's in the Great Commission. Right. So according to the Great Commission, they need to teach everything that he told them to observe, right? That's in the Great Commission. Matthew 28. Got you. Now, you said earlier that Christ, uh, I don't want to misrepresent, are you saying that Christ changed the law of Moses? Or like, uh, cause Christ I, and, and I know went that. Above I mean, the law of Moses. Got you. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's go to Matthew 23 really quick. Um, All right. Here you go. I already know what you want to use. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then, let me let me use it, then we'll address it. But I'm not just going to stick there. I'm going to read a few different scriptures mm-hmm. because I know you're going to tell know. me I can't talk after that. So, so Matthew uh-huh. 23, 1 through 3. Please have some discipline. Yeah, I won't cut you off. Please don't do that to me. Thank uh-huh. you. So Matthew 23, mm-hmm. 1 through 3. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees, Sit in Moses' seat. Verse 3. Mm-hmm. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say mm-hmm. and do not. Verse 4. Mm-hmm. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Now, I want to go back to Matthew 28 because she just talked about the Great Commission, right? So let's go to the end of Matthew 28. This is Matthew 28, 18 verses, uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, right? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, Whatsoever I have commanded you And lo I am with you always Even until the end of the world Amen Now I'm going to give you one more scripture And then I'm going to give you one more scripture And then we can You know I would love to hear what you have to say about this But this is Acts chapter 6 So this is the heinous stoning Of our great deacon brother Brother Stephen Right Now I'm just going to start at 6 13 Right For the sake of time We can deal with all these chapters Right, so now we're in mm-hmm. 6, verse 13. And set up false witnesses. These are the people who are accusing Stephen and stoning him. You can go back and read in that chapter for context. And set up false mm-hmm. witnesses. These are false witnesses, which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. So we have false witnesses saying, 
that Stephen has spoken against the holy place and the law. Now watch this. Then they lie on Jesus. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place, look, and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. So we clearly see that these are false accusations that Christ would have changed the law. He did it. He didn't teach against the law. He didn't change the law. You even agreed that the disciples and the apostles were told to teach everything that he taught, and he taught the law of Moses. So I need to understand then, I need to understand then where, and I need you to show me in the scripture now, don't go to, and I'm not, and I'm not, I shouldn't say it like that. I need you to show me Christ's teachings because I believe the entire thing is scripture. We're not going to play that straw man, uh-huh. right? I need you to show me uh-huh. Christ's teaching that he changed the law or did away with the law of Moses. Can you show me that, please? Well, again, let's start with Matthew 23, which you jacked up. So right here, question. Who is Jesus talking to? To the Pharisees and the scribes. I didn't jack that up. I clearly said that clearly. You did. Did Jesus die yet? No. That's why I read Matthew 28, because I need you to show me. Hold on. No, 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 Right? Still mm-hmm. under what mm-hmm. at this particular time? They're still under the law. So it would be hypocritical mm-hmm. for Jesus to tell them to no longer do it at this particular time. Then on top of that, he's also giving the example of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are hypocrites, just like Mr. Anonymous Eagle who's up here, hypocrites, he and Don't be rude. Saying, Don't, Don't be rude. Like, it's I, not I, necessary. I, and, 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 I'm not your child. Don't and, act, and, and, do not no, 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 that way. No, no, no. I'm not your child. Please, 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 I'm not your child. Have some. Please. Have some. Have some. So, no, no, no. That. I'm responding. I'm responding. So, again, right here, Jesus is teaching the people, hey, do what you're supposed to do, right, what they tell you to do, but don't do as they do. Do not be hypocritical. This is what Jesus is pointing out. He's leaving that out. Now he's trying to manipulate the Great Commission. Well, the Great Commission says what? And I know about her. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. But hold on. Something else that Mr. Anonymous Hebrew decided that he wants to leave out. He forgot something, right? Well, he probably didn't uh, forget it. He just stipulated it. Uh, So right here, Above that statement, guess what, family? If you turn to Matthew chapter 28 and look at what? Verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then Jesus goes into this statement. So, again, this is showing what? Jesus got authority, right? And he wants to claim as this is still the same as those things that's in the Torah, but it's not because we can find Jesus over here back at Matthew chapter 5. Let's go back there for a second. And they love to play with this scripture, you know. Not only is he, he's one of these people. He loves to play with this scripture and manipulate it, you know. So when we go over here to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, right, and they think this works out in their, in their favor, and it doesn't. It says, it says here, think not that I come to destroy the law. Of course he did, right? He said, I come not to destroy, but to what? Fulfill, right? Now, let's keep going. What, that's what Jesus said. What else Jesus said? He says, for barely I say unto you, till heaven and earth passes away, right, or one, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, fulfilled is key, is it's accomplished, it's to complete. Jesus got to complete something, right? Well, watch what he does. He goes into his prologue, right? Whosoever there shall, uh, therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, they shall be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, knowing this crazy, 
he's going to assume that this is talking about the law of Moses. But notice, if you look in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus didn't mention the law or he didn't mention what? He didn't mention the law of Moses or the prophets at this point because he's about to go into something. Watch verse 20. It says, for I say unto you, I say, but I say unto you. You know how your kids say, well, my friend said, no, for I say unto you, I'm your mom. I'm your daddy at this particular time. I'm in charge. That except your righteousness exceed, go above the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is about to take them to a whole new level, and he does. For example, when Jesus says uh, that uh, he refers to, uh, ye have heard that in the old time, referring to what? Old Testament. The Tanakh, Torah, those things that were told to you back then. Thou shalt not kill. Whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. Well, Sister Cherry, are you saying that Jesus is saying we can kill? No. Watch what Jesus do in verse 22. But I say unto you, with authority, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judge. Whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. And Jesus does this over and over and over again, all the way to Matthew chapter 7. Now, I'm about to jump in there. You, whenever you find time, go through all of Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to jump over here to Matthew chapter 5, because I'm the one answering. Matthew chapter, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to go all the way down because all of this is Jesus giving his commandments right here, telling you what you should do and what you should not do and all of that good stuff, right, for the sake of time. Now, look at this. When you get down to verse 28, I'll give you 27 for some context. He says here, and uh, and I'm starting at 27, and the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat upon that house. And it fell, right? And great wall, it fell of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended saying, the people astonished at his what? His doctrine, his teaching. He's given commandments in Matthew 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. And then got the nerve to go over there in John chapter 13, verse 32, uh, uh, 34, and call it this new commandment that I give you, that ye love one, uh, one another as I have loved you. Now, knowing this man, he's going to try to tell you, well, that's the same as love thy neighbor as thyself. No, it ain't. Listen to Jesus very clearly. Don't change his words. He said, uh, this new commandment that I give you, right, that I give you, and got the nerve to call it new, that ye love, you love one another as I, as Christ has loved you. That's not in Torah. That's not in Torah at all. So for him to even try to come back and say that, he's a liar, right? And then... He said, well, you know, he spoke about the changing of the law. Well, Hebrews chapter, I believe it's Hebrews chapter 7, I want to say. Hmm. I hope I'm right about that. Is it even Hebrews chapter Yeah, I apologize, seven, Hebrews. Hebrews. We've got a few minutes left in the air. I apologize. Oh, but, okay, um, okay. Yeah, so you can I let him respond. Just, He's the last caller. So in yeah. Hebrews chapter 7 or Hebrews chapter 8, it's one of them. It's mentioned that saying that the law, there was a changing of the law when it came to a changing of the priest, the priesthood. Because now the Levitical priesthood is no longer our priest. Christ is our uh, high priest. Changing of the law took place. So either he's going to abide by scripture or he's going to sit up here and say he don't agree with scripture. So I'm going to stay right there because I was going to go to the actual book, chapter and verse. But go ahead, Sam. We can finish. Mm. All right, so let's let him respond. And again, he's the last call, and then we're going to pretty much wrap it up. All right, guys, you can uh, okay. respond. That. All right, I appreciate you. Hey, so I just want to make clear, um, please make sure that I'm able to speak unencumbered So um, as I'm finishing up. Is, is that fair, at least? Because I know she hasn't allowed other people to yeah, good. respond. You got, you got respond. the time. You got the time. You can Thank you. Appreciate it. you. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So um, 
I could easily go into all of these scriptures. I mean, she obviously has stated some points, but she has straw man and definitely misstated some of the things I, I would say. Um, but I want to make it clear. The point that I got on and the only point that I got on to address was that earlier she said that Christ changed the law. But then she goes back and reads scriptures saying and showing that he did it. Even when he's giving his Olivet sermon or the, the Sermon on the Mount, None of these things go against the Torah, right? He's just expounding upon teachings. He's just expounding upon, and as she would say, like, he's telling them blessings. Blessed if you do this. Blessed if you do that. Even when we deal with love in our neighbor, and if she wants to say Christ gave a new commandment. Okay, let's say he gave a new commandment. Well, she would admit that Christ is the prophet like unto Moses, according to Deuteronomy 18. So he cannot change the law of the Most High. That makes him a false prophet. She will admit that. So even when we go to Hebrews, unfortunately, she shows her ignorance by not understanding that the change of the law is a transference of the law, right? And even when you deal in context with Hebrews, the only thing that it talks about being done away with is the sacrificial process because now your conscience is clear. Go ahead and read all of it. Hebrews and learn about that. Learn about the purging of your conscience. This is why Christ justifies you. This is what Isaiah 53 teaches you, that he will justify you with his knowledge. That's in Isaiah 53. Now, the final point that I'm going to make is she's been rude and disrespectful to people all evening, not addressing their scriptures, but going on soliloquy. Do not be deceived, family. Nobody's telling you Keep the law for salvation. Keep the law for justification. We are talking about sanctification, to live holy or to be set apart. That's what the law was given for. That's what the law has always been. This is why Paul said, should we do away with the law? God forbid we establish the law. That is not to say that we are not to come in and, and try to live by the spirit of the law now, because that's what we really are talking about, that it should now be written upon your heart. They never tell you what the law of Christ really is. They never tell you what the laws of the new covenant is, right? Because we know this in Jeremiah 3 and Hebrews, or Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews 8, that these laws will be written on your heart. We don't know what these laws are, though. But always they look familiar and similar to the law of Moses, but all of a sudden there's some spooky, hocus pocus, alamodocus sleight of hand that happens as it pertains to talking about the law. Or they straw man you or they're rude, and they cut you off, and then they try to get you out of your character. But we clearly see that what she's pushing does not pass the sniff test. So I'm going to let her come on in and talk about me and tell me I need to go to bed and play all the extra games. But as it pertains to this scripture, she has not shown Christ changing the law. She even read that it will not change till it says not one, one jot or tittle will pass till heaven and earth pass away. But she's got some weird explanation about that. Even when you go to Colossians 2 and 16, when it talks about let no man judge you in regard, they always skip the regard part. Look that word up. In the Greek, it's meros, which means let no man judge you in your respect of a holy day. I didn't come here to play tonight, baby. You are playing with the word, and you are misteaching people. And at some point in time, you need to repent. Because this is not what the Most High intended. He intended for people to learn how to sanctify themselves through his law, not to add grievous burdens, which is what the Pharisees and the scribes did. That's in Mark 7. That's the taste not, touch not, wash not. So anytime you want to have an adult conversation about it, we can do it. Faithful to God and any other, other brothers who always run in their mouth but don't never want to debate, always here for the smoke, right? But what we're not going to do is sit here and act like you're not jumping over the point. You won't address it. You run from it. We'll be in Matthew 23, you'll run to Matthew 5. We'll be in Acts 6, you'll run to Timothy or Romans and butcher the scriptures. So I'm going to let you come on in and do what you got to do, but you did not address anything that I said, and I want that to be clear. So y'all have a great night. Shalom to those that want shalom. 
and it is what it is. Thank you, Sal. All right, Radio Cherry, we love the last word. As usual, she's a special guest on the show. So you got the last word. Pretty much we're going to wrap it up, guys. We're going to wrap it up again. I'm glad that the people called in. And, you know, this is our only opportunity to ask questions directly to the special guest. So you called in, and I appreciate you guys. So let's make sure we love the last word. That's right. So notice that this illegitimate infidel literally just went on a slandering rant, which he pretty much said absolutely nothing at this point. And But I really caught something that was really disrespectful that he said, that the law sanctifies you, not according to Hebrews 13, 12. It says, wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. So guess what? All of that he just wasted our time saying, he just literally, and on top of that, disrespectfully taking the sanctification out of the Lord's hand and putting it towards the law. These people worship the law over the lawgiver. That's terrible. But I wanted to give you a few little things here regarding Acts chapter 15, verse 24, already said. They already let you know that a decision was made thousands of years ago that no such commandment was given to push what? the law of Moses, or to be saved by the law of Moses. The law was not created to save you, by the way. But anonymous Hebrew is too silly to actually study the scriptures to realize that. He says one thing out left side of his face, and then the right side of his face, he says something else. That is a clear-cut example of what? James chapter uh, James chapter 1, verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Everything that I have brought out to you, I came directly from Scripture. I didn't make this up, and I didn't write it. But right here, to show that Scripture lets us know that us who are free in Christ do not are not under the law of Moses, and we're not binded to that. We are free in Christ again. Acts chapter 15, verse 10 says that the law is unbearable. Romans chapter 320 says that the law reveals sin. That was one of its the law works and faith would not work. Romans chapter 4 or verse 15, I'm sorry, that was the other one was 14. This one is 15. That the law uh, uh, brings God's wrath. Romans chapter 5 verse 20 says the purpose of the law is again to reveal sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 says Christians are not under the law of Moses. Why? Because Christ set us free according to what? Paul said it clearly in Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, also through 7 through 12. Also in uh, Romans 7, uh, 7, 10, that's the key verse right there. So you might want to read the whole chapter because it's pretty good. Romans chapter 10, 4 said that for Christ is the end of the law. For what? For righteousness. The law don't make you righteous. Where do you get that from? Then on top of that, Romans chapter 8, that's enough call. That's enough to call the, of the law of Moses weak. Weak through the flesh. It has no power to save you. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56 says the law is the strength of sin. The strength of sin is the law. Oh, my God. Did you forget that anonymous Hebrew or did you ignore it, sir? Then we look at Second Corinthians 3 and 7, 3 and 9, says the law, again, is the minister of condemnation. Second Corinthians 3.10 says that the glory of the law has no glory compared to the new covenant. What are you talking about? Go to bed. You are out of your league, sir. And, again, I can continue to go if I gave you 2 Corinthians 3.11, Galatians 2.16, which the law cannot justify you before God's eyes, or second, uh, or Galatians chapter 2, verse 19, that Christians, that believers are dead to the law. The law has no parent on dead people who have died in Christ, sir. I'm dead in Christ and resurrected in him. Keep your Judaizing, sir. I don't need it. And keep your false doctrine because I've seen how it just made you miserable and has choked and made you pathetic. And you dare think that you can stand before the people of God with that weak defense? Sir, try again. That was the most weakest explanation that I've ever heard from a Hebrew Israelite. Gideon had more oomph than you. So next time, and you say, speak about, you spoke about us having a, an adult conversation, 
well, sir, I'm ready for that adult conversation, but I need you to bring an adult so we can have that. Don't ever come to me with your garbage. You have been found unwanted. And I'm going to stop right there, Sal. I don't think I need to go any further. Thank you so much for lending me your platform, and I love you regardless of we have two different positions on things. But we can clearly see that folk like to lie, and I do not tolerate lies whatsoever. And that's my piece. All right, family, there you have it. Once again, special guest, Chen Love, was in the hot seat. What do you guys think? Uh, send me an email to be talk to you at gmail.com. You can spot, respond in the comment section, of course, on YouTube. Uh, let us know, you know, what you think about the show. We're going to have some more uh, shows coming up, of course, more hot seats as well. Give me some suggestions. Who you want in the hot seat? We can bring them up on the show, of course. And we appreciate the family out there that tuned in and called into the program. It's another one of them hot seats, family. <laughs> All right, guys. So take care. We're going to see you guys next time. And God bless. Help keep the show on the air. If you want to help, you can send your donation to PayPal. The email is debatetalkforyou at gmail.com or through cash app, dollar sign, Sal Showtime. Thanks for your support. Of the beats. The beat talk for you radio.